Hey Astro fans! Earlier this year I ventured to Hull to visit the National Astronomy Meeting for a second time. Now you may remember my visit last year in which I asked astronomers what is their favourite galaxy? This year I was armed with a new question, which was what is your favourite wavelength? Now this one takes a little bit more explaining than a galaxy. If we imagine that light travels in waves, the distance between two crests or troughs is the wavelength of that light. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy that light is. At the high energy end we have X-ray and ultraviolet light. Going down in energy we have optical, infrared, and radio waves too. Sometimes astronomers may refer to frequencies of light, which is related to wavelength by a very simple equation involving the speed of light. Basically, if you have a very high frequency, that means the light is high energy. So that's shorter wavelengths again. And if you've got something that is low frequency, that is low energy and it's longer wavelengths. A specific wavelength can be very precise, such as 21 centimeters or 2.2 microns. But astronomers also talk more generally in bands. It's like those names that I referenced earlier, like infrared and radio. The cool thing is, is that different wavelengths reveal different aspects of different objects or different processes that are going on in the universe that you wouldn't see in other wavelengths. So let's see what our astronomers had to say. I'm going to go with the 21 centimetre line as my favourite wavelength. Um, the thing that amazes me about the 21 centimetre line is that, um, so this is, this is an emission line from hydrogen, um, and uh, any atom of hydrogen um, anywhere floating out on its own um, would eventually create this line. Um, but it takes 10 million years for an individual atom to create a 21 centimetre line. And it's only the fact that there's just so many atoms of hydrogen out there in space that we can detect this from galaxies that are, you know, um, millions of light years away and um, I think that's fantastic and I get very excited about the 21 centimeter line. I'm gonna go ultraviolet because even though you're not supposed to like it I look really good with a tan so I'm going UV all the way. One to ten gigahertz it's what I study mostly, so... <laughs> uh, it's radio. You can actually use the radio to see through lots and lots of dust and gas to see um, how stars and planets form. Some of the images we've, we've gotten from E. Merlin uh, that actually show planets beginning to form in orbit around stars. And so this is one of the crucial stages for um, planet formation in general. So it's one of the beginning stages for how a planet forms. So in the near infrared, my favorite wavelength would be the K band, which is 2.2 microns. And then, based on my work with Spitzer Space Telescope, I like the 24 micron band. But then, based on my work with Herschel Space Observatory, which worked at longer wavelengths, I like 250 micron band. And now I'm working with ALMA, and uh, I think my favorite wavelength there is about 3 millimeters, which is about 100 gigahertz or so. The 21 centimeter line, of course. My favorite wavelength is 150 megahertz. I think my favorite wavelength is, is actually a range of wavelengths between about 1 to 10 kilo electron volts, which I don't actually know what that is in wavelength of like meters, but it's real, real short because it's x-rays. Um, I like x-rays because lots of different things give off x-rays, but particularly black holes that have like gas and dust and stuff around them give off tons of x-rays. Um, from, from, it depends on where, like, how big the black hole is, where the x-rays come from, but it tells you a huge amount about like, what's happening around the black hole. And um, the x-rays, as they come out from the black hole, they can get absorbed by all the stuff around it. So it tells you also about the larger region. So you learn a ton of stuff about uh, various exotic objects by looking at x-rays. So half to 10 keV, those are my favorite wavelengths. I really like the Chandradeep Field South, but it's just a, a bunch of little dots, except they're like some of the most distant and most energetic black holes that we've ever like studied. But it's just like hundreds of them, just all over so the Chandradeep Field. And it's, they spent five million seconds looking at that field in X-ray. So you get really, really far away stuff that you can actually see. Radio, because with radio you can observe uh, the cosmic magnetic fields and study its structure and intensity and how it evolves. And, Time. Do you have a favorite radio image? Yeah, I probably do my own one of uh, NGC 628. The Lyman Alpha line, because it makes it really easy to pick out high redshift quasars. 
my favorite wavelength, I can give you the frequency, it's 89 gigahertz, which is the frequency with which hydrogen cyanide molecules vibrate, and they send their waves out into the cosmos, and we detect them as submillimeter waves. So to anyone else in the world, this is a microwave. To astronomers, we call it submillimeter because we like to be different. And HCN is fabulous because it tells you about the densest regions where stars are forming. So whether you're looking in the Milky Way or at distant galaxies, you want to look at 89 gigahertz and pick up your hydrogen cyanide. My favourite wavelength is hydrogen alpha, H alpha, 6563 angstroms because it tells us about star formation. Uh, 6,562.8 nanometers. <laughs> it's the H alpha wavelength. Um, so I've used it in my PhD to measure black hole masses when it's broadened by Doppler shifting and that just blew my mind as a PhD student so it'll be forever my favorite wavelength. 3727 angstroms. I like the 2175 angstrom bump, which is uh, a wavelength that's in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. And when you look at how much starlight gets absorbed by gas and dust within the interstellar medium, there's this huge bump uh, in, the, in that wavelength region that shows that there's carbonaceous molecules there uh, and probably things like graphite that's absorbing loads of uh, the light. Carbon's interesting because it's important for the formation of life. I mean, we're based on, on, on carbon molecules, and so understanding how much carbon there is in the universe and where it's distributed tells you about uh, how it's incorporated into planets and therefore which planets might be habitable. Hello, my favorite wavelength is 150 megahertz uh, because it is the wavelength that um, a telescope I use called LOFAR in the Netherlands is based at. The great thing about, 100, about 150 megahertz is that's considered uh, low frequency, um, which means that things like radio galaxies and galaxy clusters uh, shine very brightly um, down at the uh, low frequency wavelength. I reckon 21 centimeters because I'm a radio astronomer by training. It's the classic radio astronomy one, it's neutral hydrogen, see it everywhere. It is 135 megahertz which is the centre frequency of the Pulsar survey that I do with LOFAR. The optical, because um, I work a lot on uh, Hubble Space Telescope data and Euclid data. Well, my favourite wavelength is low frequency radio, uh, so that's what I work on mostly, but part of the reason I like it is that there are a lot of physical processes that can modify the shape of the spectrum at very low frequencies that you don't see at higher radio frequencies. And so it's a relatively unexplored new wavelength regime with uh, new instruments like LOFAR and then the upcoming SKA. My favorite wavelength is 2.2 micrometers because that relates back to uh, 1,500 Kelvin, which is the temperature at which graphite dust grains in the dusty torus around an active galactic nuclei sublimate. Wow, there's some really cool astrophysics that you can see with different wavelengths. The radio seem to be pretty popular, which I must admit is my favourite too. I love that how a galaxy that may otherwise seem completely ordinary, that when you view it in the radio can have these huge jets being blasted out from the black hole at its centre. It's that aspect of viewing an almost secret side of a galaxy that I find so fascinating and impressive. After hearing all of these, do you now have a favourite wavelength? If so, let me know. Until next time, keep being curious.